If you're like me, then you've been waiting for a new Prince of Persia game for 13 years. It's an iconic series that first released a title way back in 1989, but it's one that's stood neglected now for so long. However, on September 10th, 2020, Ubisoft dropped the official trailer for Prince of Persia Sands of Time Remake. It was scheduled to be released on January 21st, 2021, and obviously that time has now come and gone. So we are aware that the game is significantly delayed. And I know what you're thinking, so what? The game's been delayed and they're taking their time? What's wrong with that? Well, you see, a lot's changed since the release of this trailer. More specifically, a lot has changed at Ubisoft. Ubisoft has had an uncomfortable few years, and that's putting it mildly, from allegations of sexual harassment, to cancelled releases, to shitty buggy games at release, to recent developer strikes at their Paris office. It's certainly a company in a crisis. And this is bad news for the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, which is still awaiting a confirmed release date. It's been over two years since it was scheduled to be released, and here is why I think there's a strong chance that it will never be released. The gaming and development issues are simply the tip of the iceberg, from bugs to bad patches to games that were simply not ready to be released and should have been delayed. There are significantly better and deeper videos on the performance of said titles if you wish to learn more on this specific topic. The most grievous is the sexual harassment allegations, and they alone make for pretty sombre reading. In June 2020, allegations of sexual misconduct and harassment from men in positions of power in their France, Canada and Singapore offices that had gone unpunished for years were made public. Some of the allegations are truly disgusting and highlight the abhorrent toxic environment that was allowed to grow and thrive within Ubisoft's offices. A report by French newspaper Liberation provided more details. Now these snippets have been translated by Thomas Bideau but they give a startling insight into exactly how toxic this culture really was, from reports of drugging employees with space cakes to <laughs> insinuations that an individual should be assaulted from behind and shared around until she gets it, to using slurs against people who don't want to continue drinking until they're sick, to blocking women in elevators and forcing themselves against them, making groaning sounds and looking directly in their eyes. This behaviour is absolutely disgusting and by any person's standards is shocking and abhorrent. And the following article written by Stephen Totillo at Axios in September 2021 may give you some insight into exactly what has been done since these allegations surfaced. Now Stephen was interviewing Annika Grant who is Chief People Officer at Ubisoft. He gives context to the beginning of the article specifically stating that in July 2020 that co-founder and CEO Yves Gillemont had promised to take action and several top people exited including Chief Creative Officer and the Head of HR, though without any public statement as to why. So you, we can already see that this process is not transparent and it's very likely that golden handshakes and swift backdoor exits have taken place at Ubisoft to minimise the fallout. The article continues that in the summer of 2021, more than a thousand current and former developers criticised the company. In the words of a better Ubisoft worker group, for more than a year of kind words, empty promises and an inability or unwillingness to remove known offenders. Now I'll discuss a better Ubisoft as a group shortly, but what this indicates is that the workers themselves really do not feel that the changes that are being promised and publicly made are actually happening behind the scenes. And with a lack of transparency with regard to this process, it's impossible for the public to tell whether that is the case or not. Now the final part of this article that I reference is again another snippet from the open letter of dissatisfied workers who issued demands to management. The first, stop promoting and moving known offenders from studio to studio, team to team, with no pre repercussions. And Grant's response to this was, we don't do that at all. And that the company who has been reported for misconduct has been investigated, she said. If they're still at Ubisoft, they were either exonerated or sanctioned. Well, again, with no transparency into this process, no real reports directly to the public, we don't know this. And with the workers themselves having to go to such extreme lengths, such as striking, it's very evident that change is not as apparent and as clear-cut as Grant seems to be suggesting. And that is highlighted by the strikes that have recently taken place. 
On the 27th of January 2023, 40 developers from Ubisoft's Paris office went on strike, demanding better working conditions and better pay. Workers complain of intense development schedules for titles such as Ghost Recon and Just Dance, which is causing employee burnout. The turnout for the strike was around 15% of their overall development team, and the group stated that this was laying the foundations for future strikes if needed. So where has this strike action come from? Well, an indication of the working environment is obviously clear from what I've previously discussed, but there was also an email that was recently sent and internalized by CEO Yves Jumont, who asked the employees the following. Today, more than ever, I need your full energy and commitment to ensure we get back on the path to success. I'm also asking that each of you be especially careful and strategic with your spending and initiatives to ensure we're being as efficient and lean as possible. The ball is in your court to deliver this on time and at the expected level of quality and show everyone what we are capable of achieving," Gilles said. And it's these comments that have pushed employees to strike. An internal group called A Better Ubisoft, who are campaigning for better working conditions at the publisher, said in July 2022 that none of the demands made a year earlier have ever been addressed. And it's CEO Yves Gilmot who has overseen all of this. From his poorly worded email to his seemingly don't blame us attitude to the misconduct allegations. In an article released by Shaq News in September 2022, Gilmot said this of the sexual harassment and abuse cases. The company was running and there was way things were done. And then there was a new generation coming into the company with different needs and we had to adapt. I think we didn't adapt fast enough to what people expected and needed. Gilmour told Axios. Now just let that settle in for a moment. Apparently, it's seen as a generational issue by Ubisoft CEO. Older generations had no problem with being harassed or assaulted by colleagues. It's these new kids on the block who are against it. They have very different needs, you see, and being assaulted isn't one of them. So they've had to change. It's quite frankly a stunning comment from the CEO, considering the allegations and highlights how truly out of touch he is. And he bears the responsibility for this. It has happened under his leadership and with many executives implicated, he would undoubtedly have had close relationships and frequent contact with these people. So how was such gross misconduct missed? How are you not aware that your workers are so overworked that they feel they have to go out on strike? As CEO, he is responsible for the company's values and the environment these people work in. So let's recap here. An out of touch CEO, executives slipping out of the back door quietly with no transparency, an employee group created to improve awful working conditions who are ignored. The shit really has hit the proverbial fan for Ubisoft. So what do all these compounding issues really mean? Well, it means the company is losing money, trust and credibility at an alarming rate. Ubisoft axed four games in July 2022 and a further three games in January 2023 as a result of poor financial performance with the company looking to save around $215 million in costs over a two-year period. And to just illustrate this point, the company's share price has tanked in recent years. In July 2018, the share price was €102, Euros, an all-time high for the company, to just above €20 Euros as of February 13, 2023. That's an 80% drop in its share price over a four and a half year window, which is, quite frankly, staggering. The company is evidently in disarray, needing to cancel titles, some just before they are due to be released, and condensing those developers working on said titles into teams already working on existing titles. A mixture of bad PR, an incompetent CEO, the stock market losing confidence, and games being released when not complete, leads us to the present day where we find Ubisoft at a crossroads. The company must cut costs and satisfy the markets and expectant shareholders. And because of this immediate need for success, Prince of Persia will not be a priority. And here is why. Well, what we know for sure is that this was the last official comment on the game from Ubisoft. There's absolutely nothing concrete here. And this was done in November 2022, two months before they announced the axing of three titles only a few weeks ago. There is a need for instant results and the need for it quickly. As the previous points have illustrated, the company is in need of huge returns from any titles that it releases in the short to medium term. The company must demonstrate success and bring stability back to the company and its overall share price. And because of this, 
the focus is likely to be on titles such as Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon, Far Cry and Just Dance for those who actively play that. According to sources, these are the titles that have generated the largest in terms of revenue. So naturally, Ubisoft is going to be looking to these IPs to bring in the success required to keep the business afloat. Can they justify the outlay and resources on Prince of Persia, a title they have neglected for years? Do they truly value it? Because abandoning it for 13 years doesn't really scream that they see the potential to make the big bucks. And on to my second point. And this may scream conspiracy theory, but it's one of the reasons why I don't believe they will prioritise Prince of Persia, and it's the fact that the IP is owned by Jordan Mechner. Mechner earns a split of the profits through royalties on the titles, and it has long been theorised that this is the main reason Ubisoft has failed to create a new game in so long. With profits king at this point in Ubisoft's journey, would they take a hit on earnings for Mechner, or do they go with an IP they fully own and know they could sell more copies of? The irony here is that it's public knowledge that Ubisoft used Prince of Persia to test the game mechanics for Assassin's Creed, and let's be honest here, Assassin's Creed is now one of the best selling game franchises of all time, whilst Prince of Persia has laid abandoned and faded into relative obscurity. And with Ubisoft being a notoriously greedy company that heavily focuses on their bottom line to increase profitability in normal circumstances, there is a strong chance that they focus on generating almost guaranteed revenue with established IPs that they own and reduce the number of new titles and releases which we have already seen them do. My belief is that these issues are contributing to a very difficult working environment, unhappy staff and massive job cuts and titles that are being binned. And this is really throwing into question the overall development of Prince of Persia. I sincerely hope that I am proven wrong with my assessment and I love nothing more than for the company to turn things around. I see it personally as a win-win. If I'm wrong, there's still a new Prince of Persia remake to look forward to, right? Let me know your thoughts on this. I'm sure I'm not alone in wanting another Prince of Persia release. And like me, you might also be truly horrified by what's going on within Ubisoft. But until next time, stay lucky.